everyone. So welcome to our Kubernetes uh, user group Singapore meetup. Uh, today is our 11th uh, successful meetup we are going to have. So today we'll be having uh, exciting uh, topics to discuss. So I warmly welcome everyone again and thank you for joining and uh, for this, whoever joined online also. All right, so first of all, I'm um, going to uh, thank our uh, Meetup team who organized this session and uh, the Google uh, cooperation who is uh, sponsoring uh, with uh, the venue and the uh, food. Right, so uh, let's get started. The start with you, Wally, uh, invite uh, Sampa uh, to start his first uh, session. So, Sampa will uh, do the first session. Thank you. Yeah, hi. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, so uh, I just wanted to introduce uh, you guys to about the service mesh uh, using Linkerd. Um, so service mesh is something like a, a very important uh, tool that we would come across as a Kubernetes cluster administrator. So when you are trying to handle multiple microservices in your organization, so Linkerd is something essential. So I'll just walk you through what Linkerd does and what are the benefits we get. So I'll just move along. And uh, to say about myself, so I work as a DevOps consultant at a company called Palo IT uh, in Singapore. Uh, so I used to like work for multiple clients. And I'm also a volunteer at this uh, community group. And uh, if you guys uh, wanted to ask any questions regarding this presentation, or if you wanted to connect with me, you can uh, scan this QR code. So I'll just leave it for 20 seconds. Check. So, uh, so basically what we need for a service mesh is something like we require two prerequisites. So one would be uh, service mesh can be implemented only in microservices architecture. So you cannot implement in a monolith uh, because it doesn't make sense because service mesh is something that uh, basically like improve your traffic between your uh, microservices within your cluster. So the prerequisite is the microservice and as well as like most of the service mesh what we see in the market, like say for example, Istio, um, uh, Linkerd, so all are uh, like centered around uh, using Kubernetes containerization technology. So we definitely need Kubernetes for that in order to get that installed. So the main reason like why we need a service mesh, uh, what uh, challenges that service mesh addresses, uh, these are the three challenges, like uh, three features that would bring into your network. So one would be the traffic management. So traffic management is something like, uh, I hope you guys might have heard about uh, the Canary deployments, like uh, the uh, native Kubernetes does not support the Canary deployments. It would uh, uh, support with the rolling updates. So if you wanted to achieve something like a Canary deployment where uh, some of your parts uh, needs to be in the later, uh, the updated version and some should be in the older version. So in that case, you can try to use a service mesh. Um, so as, for my experience, I think Istio provides uh, the Canary option. And also you get something like a rate limit. Uh, so for example, like uh, between microservice A to microservice, consider like microservice A is communicating to microservice B, like you can uh, also limit. somehow we can't hear you uh, you can't hear me uh, can you hear me Hey, yeah, uh, so can you is, keep it close to the laptop? Otherwise, we can't hear you. Thank you. Okay. 
Um, so uh, the second thing is uh, the second feature it brings about is the observability. Uh, so you can also collect uh, some metrics uh, from using the service mesh. Uh, so you can uh, collect some metrics like latency and the number of requests and these kind of uh, some uh, metrics it can uh, collect using the service mesh. And the other feature is a security feature. So security is something like uh, between part to part, uh, as you know, like when you're using a Kubernetes and if you're using any of the CNI, so the thumb rule is that all parts can communicate with all parts, all the network connections are open by default. So if you wanted to have an encryption enabled between your microservices and the bots, uh, so you can use a service mesh. So when do you want to go to service mesh? Uh, uh, because something like you have to think about it, like uh, if uh, we have these features uh, available in the service mesh, so you have to think like a minimum of two of the features is required for your environment, then you go for the service mesh uh, because the service mesh comes with the cost. Uh, I mean the cost in the sense, not as a cash, uh, but it's something like related to the latency and the resource utilization in your Kubernetes cluster. So you have to ensure that um, out of three, two features should be like required for you, then I would suggest you having a service mesh. And also a disclaimer alert, uh, not promoting by any cost. So I'm just uh, something about it. Yeah. No, it's something like uh, you are back in microservices, uh, so you can't uh, send traffic continuously so that it can affect the services. So you can limit uh, something within your, uh, basically earlier days, uh, the developers used to have this logic within their codes, uh, like how many requests per second has to be sent to the next microservices. Uh, by using service mesh, you can uh, bring out all these business logic and you can use service mesh, uh, all these infrastructure related things, right? The networking part, the traffic splitting and the retrace, everything you can bring out of this logic and you can implement through solutions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's a proxy. No. Uh, no, actually, uh, this proxy has a validator, like it has an uh, TLS certification and also we define routes. So we'll have some rules set for it. So based on the rules and the authorization, it would allow the traffic. No, if, 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 if you want, if you if you intend to drop some traffic, you can do that as well. Okay. I'll move on to the next slide. Um, so, uh, so what uh, Linkity offers here is uh, that it has its own proxy. So proxy in the sense, like uh, proxy is a, a kind of a sidecar to your container. So basically it inter intercepts your uh, network traffic and your pod cannot communicate with an, another pod directly. Instead, it communicates through a proxy pod actually. So when you use a Linkerd, uh, so these proxy pods will be uh, enabled with your pods as a sidecars. And uh, Linkerd has a very, uh, Thin, uh, like a very small uh, code structure because it's not like big like Istio, like very complex to understand. I think that is like very simple because it is based on Go and Rust language. Uh, I think you know Rust is like very uh, simple file form of programming. And uh, because Istio uses NY, uh, so it's a bit complex to understand the things uh, flowing down there. And Linkerd is an open source project and it is also, uh, a uh, CNC of graduated one, so you can really use that. Um, so regarding the components for Linkerd, it comes with two components. So one is the control plane, and one will be the data plane, similar to what you see in the Kubernetes cluster. So we'll go through these things, like what uh, lives in the uh, control plane and what is the data plane on that to make sense. So this is how uh, your pods look before uh, the Linkerd service mission. So, uh, the microservice A can communicate with microservice B and C can communicate with B. It's all open traffic over there. So when you're applying a Linkerd, so uh, as I told you, the proxy ports will get attached and all the communication will flow through a proxy. 
So what features uh, does Linkerd offers uh, from its uh, package uh, is something like observability. Uh, so such as you can uh, calculate the success rate, the latency, and the throughput. And as well as uh, as we discussed, the retries as well, and the time out for your request, like how long it can wait. Uh, it can send on another request in case it gets paid. And also it uses uh, yeah, an algorithm to do a load balancing. So if you have three replicas, uh, basically it has an algorithm to find out which replica is best to send uh, your traffic, like your destination as a three replica. It makes a map then sends to the right uh, replica port. Uh, so it has the logic built in. And we also have a security related uh, MTLS, which is for encrypting the traffic. Um, certificate management. Uh, certificates are basically generated by Linkerd itself. Like um, there are two ways: either Linkerd generates its own certificates, or you can use OpenSSL certificates and you can make it work with Linkerd. And uh, it also handles its own rotation and policy. So as an administrator, you don't have to worry about that. So uh, today we will see more about uh, the security part uh, because with the limited time, so we could able to only cover one of the features here. So I'll walk you through this. Yeah. So we'll just uh, touch a little bit of basics about uh, transport layer security. I hope most of you guys would have known about TLS. Uh, so when we connect to an HTTPS website, so basically um, uh, it authenticates uh, the client, basically your browser authenticates the validity of the server um, using this TLS technology. So basically what uh, I just drawn a simplified it, and it would get connected. Um, here, uh, only the server side is being authenticated, like uh, is being checked. Uh, I know, like, there is a lot of complex technology of the handshake, but this is a simplified version of it. So, basically, when we talk about certificates, so it's a PKI management. So, we have a, a certificate and a private key combination for all this um, access. So, uh, as I told you, you can use something called as an MTLS, so which is called as a mutual TLS. So, from the name itself, it refers something as a mutual. So, mutual in the sense like both client and server are getting validated. So, if you think in a logical point of view, when you are trying to access from a web browser to a server, so only the uh, client needs to understand who's the server. And the server's only job is to just um, uh, serve all the requests. Uh, the microservices architecture. So, uh, both the source and the destination port, the services, they have to understand like who is sending uh, the request, getting the request. So, in that case, like MTLS is the best approach because it would validate both uh, the client and both the servers. So, basically, uh, the flow is something like you would have an extra step. Where um, the client is also being authenticated here. So instead of client and server, you can just think of like uh, microservice A here and microservice B. So, so uh, about the MTLS, so MTLS comes along with the practice as a default. So you can use that. Like, uh, as I told you, you can either uh, generate new certificates using LinkedIn or you can use the existing certificates. And each part gets its own certificates. Um, so we'll uh, see how it gets. And these certificates are rotated every 24 hours uh, by the Linkerd itself. So it's, it, it manages by itself. So basically what uh, uh, we can see here is something like, as I told you, like we have two components, the control plane um, and the data plane. Um, so basically the control plane uh, are the pods uh, basically that uh, that's uh, think like a queue system pods like uh, where you have a pod called a destination pod, proxy injector, and the identity. So what this proxy injector does is that uh, so basic uh, when you try to install link uh, when you enable a flag called linkerd enable inject the proxies uh, on all your application pods. So that is the job of this proxy injector. So it is kind of a uh, uh, mutating webhook, so which will look out for your pods. So whenever a new pod is getting uh, deployed, 
with annotation set as uh, Linkerd enabled. So it would basically inject the proxies. And something uh, uh, as I told you, like Linkerd manages its own certificate. So this handles. So it will do the annotation certificate generation updated each other. So that is the job of this identity. And the destination. Uh, destination is something like um, we have discussed about. What's us to Hey guys, then pass. Looks like uh, we lost you again. We can't hear you. My command room. Am I? I have fixed about it later. Where's my cursor now? Okay. Okay, got it. All right. Okay, sorry for the slight delay. Uh, apologies. Um, that's why many many uh, monitors so can't mess up. But uh, that's, that's, I'll just leave it for now. Okay. Uh, hi uh, everyone. I'm from Com. So today, uh, we talk a bit on the Kubernetes Gateway API that's uh, recently released. Uh, in uh, late last year in the beta. So 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 try try to share with you what it is. Okay. We, Keep a more neutral point of view and, and see how actually can help in your uh, ingress consumptions. Right. Hello, hello. Yep. All right. Okay. So uh, just let me know if I'm speaking too loud or too soft. Right. So, all right. So um, a quick introduction to myself. But um, big one, right? Robin uh, Kong, uh, sales engineer in Singapore. Um, yeah. I should be that I started doing some APIs integration and uh, used to work in DBS, GovTech. And also Talas LF and eventually at Com. Uh, my experience is basically in software engineering and DevOps and Kubernetes and stuff. Yeah, um, but that's not about me today. So move, move on quickly. Okay, so the, the topic for today basically will just give you some recap of what's ingress controller, some technical overview of gaming APIs, a uh, quick demos. Some roadmap for Com, and then some quizzes, Q and A, and if you answer a question or even if you ask a question, my colleague will actually pass you a pin that you can actually redeem for swag later. Okay, so uh, just try to try to be attentive for what I say, but you can Google if I some the question I ask you. So no worries, right? Okay. So, all right. So a quick one: What is sequence controller? So if you use Kubernetes, I think it's uh, captain obvious, right? I mean, it's a uh, ingress. In a layman term, it's like your front door. So before I come into Google, the lady will check me, hey, are you sign up, blah, blah, blah. So there's something like that. Okay, just with a very layman term. So you can come in and actually route the different traffic to your services that deployed in, in the Kubernetes cluster. So that's in a nutshell. That's how it works in the Kubernetes. The front door that actually route all, all the different to the different services that where you deploy in your PA cluster. Okay, that's a very quick, quick recap. So you think of the Nginx, the Kong, and, and all these like all these are ingress controller that you probably be using the, the few open source ones. Let me see. Right. Um before I go on, right? Uh, have you heard of Kong? Okay, so so um if you don't know, right? So we are a test uh, test company based in the US and uh, we actually take care of the cloud connectivity platform. So Kubernetes ingress controller API gateway is one of the top products. We also have service mesh, right? Uh, it's called Puma CSCF and uh, enterprise version. So uh, if you want to know why you should pick us over LinkedIn, you can talk to me after the talk. So we can tell you some of the benefits, okay? Okay, so uh, COP is an API gateway, yes. So we also can function as a uh, 
ingress controller where you get the function of the API to Okay, so this is a nuts and bolts of what's inside. It's basically calling the API with a our self uh, controller, right? Then it's difficult to upstream. It's very typical what ingress controller works like. But then again, we try to enhance it with our API gateway uh, functionality that can use it, like uh, API keys, open ID calling, all, all, all these uh, where you can actually write custom resource uh, definition to, to secure your API and route. So that's how, how it works in a nutshell. All right. So uh, that's what it is. Okay. Uh, by the way, please stop me if you have any question. I try to keep this two way. So don't have to ask questions uh, until the end. Just stop me. Uh, me and my colleague can address you. Okay. So why? So I think the question is why people want to change the way you create ingress routing, right? So there's a few few school of thought, right? Ingress currently that use nginx, Kong, whatsoever, they do some uh, PLS routing, load balancer implement. That, that's very basic. But why the gateway API started coming out? Why people should try to do that? It's because of the need for more advanced use cases. Things like Header based matching, traffic splitting, weighted traffic splitting, traffic mirroring, etc. So, this is where all the advanced use cases are coming out that, that as you see that the current ingress implementation might not be able to address that due to the evolving needs of the services. And of course, you can extend the ingress, uh, the gateway API to other routing protocol, proprietary routing, for example, and other backend. So, there's a lot more functionality and flexibility in there. Okay? So quick example, right? I think it gives you a scenario easier to understand how can we do that. So if you create an API, uh, sorry, routes using REST, you might find this pretty familiar. So maybe we have three personas, like uh, Alice, Alice, Bob, and Carol, infrastructure provider, like Alice, cluster operator, and application developer. Okay, I know you people in DevOps, you probably do everything, right? You create an LB, you create the ingress controller, you create a secret, right? you also have to deploy the ingress or anything, right? you do everything. But then again, you, need, you look at it at a more uh, macro view and then see how actually you can persona, all these three different personas actually works in this manner. Okay. So, uh, first one is uh, Alice, right? Instance provider. This is where you, uh, this is a gateway API, right? how you actually define. You will actually, before you create cluster, you want to share to your extended team as a platform engineer or something, right? You create a gateway class. You define the type of load balancer based on the based on the your, your provider like GKEs or uh, EKS like AWS, they will have their own uh, controller. And then you set all this, uh, you create all the parameters if you want to like a uh, subnet or this right. I didn't book here, uh, it's for, for basic understanding. So actually you will have the role to actually define the gateway class in an instant class of your rented, right? That kind of like inheritance, right? That kind of uh, address, right? So, so you define that, okay? And then the next person is a cluster operator, right? People like uh, you got your CKAs, right? So you're probably doing this, huh? Uh, so you create a gateway, okay? You choose a kind of gateway that you want to, to set for your cluster. That's where the gateway class name they come into place. You reference to the external LB, which you, for example, that you created. Can be internal LB also, especially if your cluster that, that actually uh, route between internet or outside traffic. And then you set the listener that actually will expose the box. Okay? So then how, how it works. So, so, so data I want to show you actually when I create a GKE load balancer, actually I only expose the AP, AP port when they come in and the traffic will come in. All right. And, um, and then as an app developer, right, typically you write your CI key, you create your microservices, and then you want to create the YAML file, your health center, you will actually write your HTTP route. Okay, that's pretty straightforward when you expose your services based on the pump or the host name that you want to. And then the Kong ingress control will then make decisions based on the host name that's coming into the request and the path, and then will forward to the service that actually you created, like MEs, for example. Okay, that's a typical, pretty similar flavor of how you actually do your ingress object right now. Okay, so um, simple use case, all good, right? So, so actually, to you, what how it helps, right? So, the key thing is actually try to day two operation, right? So, how it actually helps you? Okay, so so imagine you want to roll out new new version of your app, right? So so if you create a if you don't use API given like call you or all this kind of logic of service mesh, right? Typically you need to recreate everything, like right? create a service, right? And also recreate a maybe an ingress object. But then again, you see using the uh, newest uh, implementation, right? You can actually also do a traffic splitting and weightage. Okay, so actually this is the gateway kind of gateway, the API gateway or mesh capability. Actually, bring this up with your ingress control. Okay, 
And this is not like for budget that you can pay for this, uh, no one. Uh. Okay, open center. Uh. And then from there, when your request come in for this store, uh, you know, actually you will toggle based on the weight. Maybe only 10% go to your internal user because it's a cannot release station. Okay, that's the that's the, the power that you get for this new API gateway uh, implementation. Okay, gateway API, apologies. Right. And then as a pop. Uh, the CKA guy, right? Okay, you got the CKA, right? So you have to, after that, you got to upgrade your LB. Imagine, you know, e, AWS classic LB, and then you want to go to a network LB that support POS right now. How can you do that without impacting? So basically, you'll just update the, the, the uh, gateway classic, okay? And then you point to, to, to the different version of that. Okay, so, so actually, it helps to, 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 to manage that you don't have to redo everything in the dash. So can do that, huh? and then also the cluster operator, right? Like, like, um, like at least, right? To you, when you create a new load balancer type, to you, it's just a changing of your of your controller type. Okay, maybe you change to from EKS to Azure, right? Application gateway or something, right? Then you change change to the controller reference, but your name doesn't change. Okay, so in a nutshell, if you are the gateway, right? To you, it just reference to the but the gateway cluster, so no impact. In Okay. So all these are actually segregating of the roles. So and, and then when you do day two operation upgrade, change your LB type, all these, this will ensure that the uh, current uh, dev developer, you don't have to make changes at any rest object. Okay, because everything is just a reference. Whenever the reference update and whenever you create a new ingress uh gateway API route, you will get the newer uh implementations. Uh, okay, it's something like old object oriented on programming to me, but uh, I don't know if the best way to it. <laughs> Okay, so some concept for gateway API uh, before I think I show a quick quick demo. Okay, um, so gateway API is two things. I think this is just a reiteration uh, of what I mentioned. Infrastructure provider do a gateway class, cluster operator do a gateway design it to be generic. Then add them like you creating the routes, okay, HTTP route, GRPP route, and and then TLS route, even TLS route for example. Okay, so pretty straightforward. And some concept I think also the same, right? Uh, gateway class before I set up gateways that share a common config, the, the more of the infra side gateway will determine how traffic will be translated to the service, how, how the how the service come in, what top will open the implementations, and then the route resources where all the application dev and create their invest uh, gateway route objects. Okay, pretty straightforward. Okay, so I will, I will show you a very quick demo. So basically, I will create a LB. Uh, then uh, do a simple route to the two services. Uh. So this one is self explanatory. Yes, hi. Uh, yes, please. Yeah. Um, can I put multiple sort of criteria? Like you want to have 20, 30? No, um, not 20, 30. But for example, what happens if there's too much load on 90? Ah. So I want to put multiple criteria that if there is too much load on, so not going to my generic, but based on my main, then it does something else. Can I put that multiple criteria? Um, that means you want to restrict the 90 traffic, right? So the uh, two ingress controller might not be, okay, if it has something like mesh probably, but typically all these are through the policy that you want to attach at your service area. That means, at the service side, out of the out of this KIC, you can you attach a rate limiting policy to actually throttle that. Okay, yeah, but but um, I haven't tried that because you're skipping. But if you use Kong gateway, you can probably have some um, each a few policy together. But definitely, typically, we have centered at, at the nearest the service. So, yeah, okay. Of course, at the front, you can actually throttle, but then again, it's before the ninety and ten. Any questions? Yeah, that's the first question. Hey, hi. Uh -huh. You mean the um I haven't tried, but you can speak uh the summation would be hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Yes, so you can create many routes with many weightage based on your needs. Yeah. But uh, typically, one HTTP route you need to sum up to 100. Okay, right? Okay, let me try to show a quick one. I try to cover the screen. Let 
Yeah, please ask questions so that uh, we can give you things. Okay, we come here not empty handed. Okay, where is how do uh, how do how do I bring this below? Let my screen is like I keep losing my screen. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, give me a while. Okay, I think I'll Sorry, my, my touch pad is a bit sensitive. No. I can't do it. Okay, let me just uh, edit this first. Hmm. Oops. Okay, let's go. Let me let me do another thing. No problem. All right, let's do this. Okay, um, let me find my repo. Let me just expand this. Oh, thankfully, your, your, your system is here. I can see from this side. <sighs> Apologies. Uh. Okay, let me expand a bit so that you all can see a bit bigger. Okay, let's pick it up. All right, so let's see what's inside, okay? So basically, I have some YAML files that actually will, uh, they need to install. So um, so basically, um, apologies, I let you see in a, in a command, command, uh, command format. Uh. So basically, when you want to install the, the uh, the, the Kong ingress control right there. There's a few things you need to do. Okay. Uh, first of all, you need to create a cluster, right? So because Google sponsor our space, I will create Google GKE. Uh, but you can create other cluster if you want. So uh, after you get a cluster, you install your your Kong KSD, definitely, right? So uh, by the way, I already installed. So so uh, you can just follow, follow the step. I will share the repo later. You install the Kong KSD, Kubernetes ingress controller, right? Just run the YAML. And now, now you need to install the gateway API because it's still in the beta, right? You need to install this separately. So basically, you have to go to the Kubernetes 6 and then also install the release. Uh. So the recent one is uh, experimental install 6.2. And then you do that, uh, you restart Kong. Restart Kong. And then importantly, right, because Kong gateway API is still uh, in beta, you need to <coughs> enable the feature flag, right? So you can follow this step by step and then you can do it. Okay, so next, let me show you what, what, uh, what happened. So eventually, I will apply the gateway itself. Okay. So let me see what's inside the gateway. So now you imagine I install the Kong Ingress controller. I set the feature flag already, right? So what happened is I need to install this gateway uh, class. So just remember all this, right? I install the gateway class, um, but now I do everything. I, 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 so, so this one, when I spin up this, there will be a load balancer that's coming out. And uh, after that, I also link the gateway, which which also ensure that how the ports are actually working. So by opening up port 80, you see the LB right now will open port 80 to actually accept the traffic. This is where the proxying happens. Okay, so I think I installed this already. So let me see. After I think it's done, uh, gateway. So, yeah, by looking at the other screen, it's still. Yeah, so after you get everything right, you should get a public facing ID um, that will be accessible to from, from your from 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 GKE. Lah. So so if you do a HTTP buy uh, all this right, uh, see that actually you see this ever very familiar use call. Lah. So when you your service sometimes not available, you get this whole code very familiar, right? You know that person is using call. Wait, so this show that the networking and connectivity is there already. Okay, so this just a uh, all right, and now next, let's try to uh, install two services, version one, version two. Okay, um, it's just an echo HDD, right? So let me do that now. Okay, just an echo service, no this, and then with another one, B. Okay, there's two things HTTP and uh, echo. Okay, and now let's see how can you do a HTTP route to do that 50 50 where 
when the service comes, one will go to echo, one will go to HTTP. So let me show you the HTTP uh, URL. Okay, so you can see quite simple, right? I think that's what uh, it's just a simple way of showing. So I just reference to the gateway class that I created just now. I just set the host name and also um, the path the thing. So all the requests that come in at the code echo path. And then a back end, I'll do a 50 50 toggle between the two services that I created previously. Right. So we can see the service right here. Uh, sure, but not uh, you should. Yes, but uh, it's part of the pitch feature in Kong Ingress Controller. You can do that. Uh, that would be a bit more advanced, but neutral point of view, gateway API will support that. Okay, but you want to try the Kong plugins? Sure, let us know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so I think uh, the proxy is created, right? Okay, everything is good. And now let's try to apply this. Where's my, where's my toggle again? Apologies. And there's no, my eyes not very good. Okay, so let me just apply this. Okay, and uh, let me um, do something. I need to copy the proxy IP. You are. I'm doing a. I don't want to type the okay. So what I'm doing, I'm just copying the, the IP so that it has to work. Okay, now I try to uh, make a call to the to the API. Let's see. HTTP, um, so I proxy IP, remember the three three four dot something. And uh, so remember just now the rock. I put echo right, okay, echo one, remember. So now I, if I put Robin, what, what will I get? Okay, very good. So we can give him one. <laughs> very good, you're attentive, good. Yeah, no wrong, okay. So now I put echo one. Uh. Oh, no wrong also, why? Yeah. Oh, I haven't applied the thing. Did I not apply? I didn't apply my route this time also. That's my mistake. Okay, now you see. Oops. Okay, I need to debug this. Um, my debugging with you. Don't, you don't do that often. <laughs> ah, I know why already. Okay, uh, okay, found why. You want to see? You want to guess? You can get a sweat in the engine. So what, what are the things beside the rocks that actually make a difference? <laughs> ah, someone, I hear someone, what, what you're saying? Anybody? Right, yes, I didn't put a host name. Remember just now I saying, you based on two conditions, the path and also the host name. Okay, the way I think he deserves another. <laughs> this gentleman at the side. Yeah, ah, this one, I think he got a pin already. I think he, yeah. Okay, so now if I put the host name, you will see this. Actually, this is not planned. I forgot to put this video. Really my mistake. Ah, oh, there you see. It come out already. I don't know my Apple service is down. It's what am I doing? <laughs> ah, lama. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Until I lost also. Then you get to see the on service. Okay. 15, 15, you see? Sometimes, oops. Okay. Sometimes I go to this, and that's where the traffic not actually makes sense. Okay. I appreciate that. You all are very attentive because I also made mistakes. I forgot to my finger. All right. Let me go back to the slide. Um, okay. So I think that's a basic thing. And uh, I think. Uh, I want to start the question because uh, the other speaker might not be happy already. So, um, yeah, let me go to the quiz directly. So, all these are mentioned. So, just one thing additional route, remember uh, TCP, GRPC, and UD. Okay, remember this. Okay, you want to enable API gateway? I say it will start later. These are all the steps that people will be there. All right. And uh, this is not, not MMI. I don't talk too much. Okay. 
Okay, so one last thing before I go to quiz, right? The invest con invest rate or actually creating cost will still be there. It won't be removed, so no issue, right? Because uh, gateway API will just be a complementary to, to your advanced use case. So there's no plan to remove as of now, like, based on what the, the user groups say. Okay. Um, yeah. So I think I will give you all three questions. So, so more thing to more thing to say. What do you need? Please tell me. Raise your hands. Okay, uh, this guy's very nice. You can shout also if you <laughs> want fast. Other we show you. Yeah, very good. Yeah, you're right. Correct. Great, great job. Okay. Okay. Uh, next one. This answer you uh, this question will answer correctly. I can go give you question. Name one Kubernetes invest control implementation that support gateway. <laughs> Oh, I'm presenting the whole You you uh, give someone a chance. <laughs> Come on. Any question? I'm, I'm uh, this that's the purpose of I me coming. Okay, this gentleman. This gentleman? Yeah, this first. No. So no. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good chance. Okay, next one, next one. Okay, next question. Uh. So we have the question next. Okay, remember before I take the last question, uh, last question. Beside HTTP route, what are the additional routes that are supported? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This gentleman, he said he shot first. I got QDP. Okay, give me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, two more questions. Never mind. Okay, uh, if you go in the Saturday platform Asia event, I, I will change the question. So, no worry. Okay, uh, will give me can replace the invest API? Who your hands? You know, no way, time, I don't give any. No echo. Uh, okay, 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 uh, this just a bit. Oh, you'll give the one behind. Yeah, you said no, like, yeah. yeah. Both of them say no. Okay, yeah, thank you. Okay, last question, last question. I think go over. Okay, uh, this, okay, this one, uh, I, I didn't share so this one I I I don't put up but last last question uh uh very simple but oh, I think a random question okay where where is called HQ where is our HQ okay that's very easy already because this one I just show I don't want to okay okay okay, okay, okay. okay, okay done 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 thank you so much I'm done hey uh did you want to talk about this yeah, so last last thing, last parting uh gift before for your please take this so uh we have a Kong certification. So if you're running some Kong in your enterprise, you can actually get a hundred percent off on our certi certified uh gateway associate. Uh. So please take this down. Now I send a diagram check uh, on this so you can enjoy the hundred percent off on, on the Kong certification. So it's like a like we do your CKA, CK where you have some proctor looking at you, okay? So if you're doing something like that, please do have this as an option, okay? Don't worry, I'll send this uh, after the presentation. All right, uh, I think I'm done. Thank you so much. Right. Okay, thank you, Robin. Thank you very much for the awesome presentation. And now next uh, in line, we have uh, Bumi and uh, Sakin Chobe, who will be coming in and discussing about uh, uh, like uh, the best practice of platform engineering and multi cloud. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Before that, we have. No, I just want to say if you get a pin, you can get a t shirt from us. That's the purpose of the pin. Or pass your t shirts. Yeah. Thank you very much, Kong, for the swag. And uh, yeah, whoever has got the pin can. Reach out to the Kong team over there and you can claim your t shirts. Okay, so without any delay, let's start uh, with Sachin and Gobi. That's my partner in Kam Kams. Uh, we will be asking, this is more a panel discussion. Okay, I believe Ara. It's more a panel discussion. We will be asking questions to each other. We will be more than happy if you have any questions. You could raise your hand. We will both be allowed to answer on that. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Sachin. 
So, so what we designed at night, uh, we keep on monitoring the session like I do. I hope like most of you guys already know. Uh, it was like uh, like last year when we organized the session, right? Every time the third session is kind of more tiring, and we want to convert from the session format to the panel format. Okay? I'm working more on the multi cloud. Sachin working more on the platform. So what we designed at right, it's kind of like a panel type of discussion. Uh, it's not prepared, totally unprepared one. Uh, whatever the things comes in my mind related to the platform, I'm going to ask Sachin. Same way, Sachin is going to ask me for the multi cloud. Okay, so we are not going to share any screens. It's more kind of like a talking. So over to you, Sachin. Uh, okay, maybe let's introduce over to ourselves to you. Uh, so I'm Bhumin Adam. So I have like a 15 years of experience in data center and cloud. I run like multiple user group, assembly to Kubernetes, AWS security as a group also I'm running, along with like a, a lot of other stuff. You can reach out to me if you wanted to talk or like if you want to be part of anything. Apart from that, like I do like mentoring and on or the walk, you can reach out to me if you want like anything on the mentoring or not. I focus more on the multi cloud architecture, uh, connectivity, security, and observability. That's my uh, day to day job and cloud architecture and cloud native stuff. So, what do you say? I think you wanted to introduce ourselves. Uh, hi, my name is Sachin. Uh, I'm a solution architect working for decision science. Uh, my day in day out is we are working for more immediately. Go out there. We are vendors, so we are working for multiple agencies. Also. Sorry, it's recording. Oh, we are not going to use any customer name. Uh, it's kind of like a consider. You can think like if you are going to attend any interview at all, right? People will ask you, hey, what's the things? That's what we are going to do that. In case, uh, and as I told, it's an ad hoc. If you have any questions, maybe you might be faced with the cost, like an interview, or you were manager, or whatever it could be. Ask us, we will. You don't you kind of like a call consider what I can tell you answer the question. It's kind of like a mentoring. Okay. Yeah, please go ahead, touch it. So uh, 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 work on uh, multi cloud uh, Kubernetes is right now to go anywhere. There is no remedy man. You have to work on Kubernetes. You like it or not. So and uh, in part of platform engineering, we are uh, working on complete CI CD.
region, then this can come, deploy it as soon as done. That's the reason. Is that what you are trying to say, right? That's it. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So I already asked three questions to Sachin. Anyone wanted to ask another question? If not, like I can go and ask the fourth question. Yeah, please. So maybe you're not for, for my understanding. I just want to understand like uh, there's a DevOps, there's yes. a SRE, and then there's yes. a platform team. Yes. Maybe some companies there's infrastructure team as well. Hey guys, it's a chain. Mm -hmm. Bumi, are you guys mm -hmm. sharing the screen? Uh, I mean, is it the same DevOps? See, uh, now we can see. Okay. Now there is no infra teams. They are shifting into DevOps. There is all infra teams are becoming DevOps. They are being trained on platforms. They are upgraded out there. So you identify with the DevOps or a platform engineer? And, uh, see, I work as solution architect. Okay. So my spectrum does not limit to one zone. Okay. Based on business, we design the complete architecture. Wherever business needs comes up, I have to get into that. Maybe not in the morning, I'm a DevOps engineer. By evening, I will be SecOps. By the night, if there is any, uh, any issues, so I will be in L3. So it depends. It depends. Okay, I think I think uh, I understand the question. Yeah. Maybe I can ask. Yeah. Maybe I. You know, like you say, uh, platform engineering. Yeah. So, I think most of the same stuff done by solution architects. So, what is the difference? Uh, think, uh, we already had a solution architect team, right? That was a good question. That's my uh, fourth question. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, yeah. Solution architect. Okay. Uh, do designing. Primarily, they used to only do on the perspective of application perspective. They were not thinking on an infrastructure concept. Infrastructure, they used to think only on the high level. Now they have to think on network. They have to think on, if just example, very basic example of ALB. In ALB, they also have to think about listeners. How many listeners are there? How much backend have to be go there? So the role have expanded okay, for solution architect. That's Okay, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Now I'm going to a question. Maybe I can tell you. So, platform engineering is more kind of organization approach. Okay, so if you are building a project or your organization, and say there are people these days, right? Like, okay, I'm building a, maybe some one of the VFS sites. They are building an application for them. They, they don't have any clients, right? So, for them, they call mostly on the platform. And the developers who are building extensive applications for the like kind of microservices. That's where platform engineer comes into the picture. SRE is more kind of a day two. Okay, it's already deployed. We wanted to make sure how it is done uh, from the day zero to day one, day two. That's a day SRE responsibility. Solution architect again. Who please say developers say I have a requirement. I think I want to try this. Can you do the I want to do Google or AWS or Azure? Can you do the high level design? What are the best case scenarios? That's the solution architect. Did I answer your questions? Perfect. Okay. So I have asked five questions. Done. Okay. You are happy now, right? You are stressed out. No, no. No, just kidding, man. I have more questions. Okay. Yeah, Please come in. Okay. okay. The question is now uh, as organizations moving into SaaS based. Uh, where infrastructure is not managed by the users, like digitally native businesses. Like, yeah. So in that, maybe more of uh, looking ahead as we go towards um, just consuming services. Uh, it could be like GoDaddy for building websites. Mm -hmm. So similarly, you're not maintaining anything, but your applications are running. So is there any predictions or kind of uh, conversations that you're having? Uh, around where there's no infrastructure to manage for that organization. Mm -hmm. What What is the responsibility and how do you go for it? I believe that's the same point we discussed of the track. Observability is taking over it, right? So there is there is not, uh, the, the role is just changing. Now when observability comes into picture, we come to know which processes, which activity is taking uh, resources and we can plan on top of that. Where, uh, the the rule is just we are just wearing a different hat. Previously, we are wearing 
the hand where we used to uh, set up the servers, we have to maintain the servers. Now we are not physically doing it. Now we are managing on the logical step. Okay, the CPU utilization is going up. Let's plan for adding one more server. Let's plan for fault tolerance. There is a problem. We have uh, this application going 90 percent. Can happen that uh, this can fail. So, Keda, uh, okay. In, uh, in Kubernetes, we use Keda. So, we can use Keda, define parameters out there. But, okay, when we 70 persons, we will add one more nodes. Once the utilization go below 40 persons, we will remove that nodes. So, based, so the logic remains the same. Only point changes is uh, the, the activity, the process is changed. Okay, I got it. So we have simplified, right? The simplified answer is like that you have your at server layers, in like the country layers and stuff. That doesn't matter for platform engineering. Platform engineering is meant to produce, develop, operate. Whatever the stack you are saying, right? If you are such a customer, continue Microsoft company, such a stack, who is going to manage this existing operation structure? That will be there. There will be no change on that. Okay. For that, any, anything on the end user experience or anything, there will be like a multiple tool that can work up on the how the task traffic and everything. Okay, I have last question, then followed by Sachin also want to ask me. Please go ahead. Uh, I think you know, like when you have to take the choice between managed and uh, self managed services, like it's a Grafana, it's a managed Grafana. Mm -hmm. So, how do you take that um, decision? And is it and how do you assess the cost? Because there's a cost to manage servers, otherwise you don't make your See, uh, when you have to manage, first check whether you have the uh, resources available in your hand. If you don't have resources, go for fully manage. Don't be hero, okay? Don't think that first I will have the service and then get paid. Or first go for fully manage. When you think that, okay, now the fully manage is doing my job, I can, if I can optimize cost better, if I start managing uh, myself, then you can get the resource, plan your budget, and do as for that. But uh, if you have to go, uh, to be very honest, currently even for few of my customers, I first went to fully manage, okay? We are still under operations. So if they come to a level where the cost goes up, where fully managed become expensive, self managed comes uh, cheaper at that time, we will do that. So it's keep cost, keep uh, security, keep lots of perspectives when you're planning out there. But if you don't have resource, better go for pretty much. That's one of the concepts. Yeah, I agree. Okay. No, I can <laughs> And again, this is ask me anything uh, to me, uh, both Sachin and you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Anything on multi cloud you need to ask, who is there? I have. I have not prepared anything and you are showing something. I have questions, <laughs> but I am well prepared, boy. Yeah. And I need to be. Okay. okay. Um, first question. Okay, let's do something. How to go? Okay. Yeah, sure. So, first question is whether customers are really using multi-cloud or it's just a buzzword? It's a good question. Before I answer, maybe I'll pick you here. How many of your customers already use multi-cloud? Is it not a buzzword? Okay, I answer the question. So simple, right? Yeah. Show me some difficult questions to me. I love the difficult but I'll make questions. Okay, the next is on yeah, the top of the yeah. But then we have a lot of solutions. That's a good question. We know it. Robin, that's a really good question. I think we summarize what this question is about. Since multi cloud has become multi cloud and hybrid cloud become law, some of the applications and some of the applications in some of the applications in other you know, connect them. Multiple cloud. Ring. Ring the cloud, right? So, what is the connection? That's why, like, SD1 basically. I, I answered your, uh, did I understand your question correctly? 
people. The solution is SDVAN. How many of you know SDVAN? It's like a software defined area that you show. That's the problem. That's what happens, right? It can abstract the internet traffic. It can be end up like a cloud, like a ring road. So you can have like a simple policy engine. From there, you can deploy kind of a virtual router to all of the things. For example, you can have a AWS transit gateway that the virtual router can be put on and Azure Divan there like that. We can do that. Apart from that, inside the cloud also, if you are using AWS, you have like multiple regions and you want to connect. AWS has a concept called cloud plan. And if you wanted to connect multiple multiple other people, you can use the transit gateway. But apart from that, you can use cloud plan also. Anything as you leave that. Yeah, yeah, all the SD that can be totally done. Because you are so abstracting you, you are doing the things from the internet. You can have like a policy engine from the internet, push it across. Yeah, just like what are you going to do with the routing? Just like a transit gateway on this made up there, and here like a VPN, or you can something like this. It's so easy. Yeah. Exactly, that's true. Because what happens here? Previously, uh, there is a misconception. That's what that's a good question. I appreciate it. People think when 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 it's a multi cloud, they think, okay, I have a, like a consider, I have three layer app, I have a web in the internet, and I have the one cloud edge and DVD in on premises. This is one of the question, right? Can, can we use this like logic? Mostly, I did not see. Very rare, they have. No kind of a complex or no kind of easy situation. Why? Because why it's not common? Two things. It involves a lot of complexity. Second thing is, it involves not only the complexity, high cost. Complexity and cost. So they are not doing that. If there is a business demand for some of these things, you know, I worked with one of the um, biggest multi cloud opportunity for one application here too. They have a tender maker, right? It's kind of like RFP. I did not see any production, but this is what they told this kind of similar equipment. I have like one of my tools here, right? Like, yeah. They are using the things of download Two questions, I think three questions. I'm just gonna ask them. Okay, the next question is oh, if anybody, please, I am I have prepared my question. Yeah, because they are many, most of the time, like you have data based system on-prem. Yeah. Application or the like, web-based application now on your cloud. Mm -hmm. Most of the client don't want to use the data based onto the cloud. They keep the data which is in the on-prem. And then, okay. Yes. Yes. most of the time, I think it might be, you know, yeah, but, but I, I, actually, I see. So they want to keep the data secure and secure into their cloud. Okay, so there are two different things. Whatever you are saying is high pay. Whatever he is asking is multi -cloud. Both of them are different. It's not only data based, it's called data. It's common. Data is kind of like that's when the sovereign cloud comes into the picture. One thing is private cloud comes into the picture. That's totally different. You are having same cloud or the extension of the cloud in your on premises. That's for uh, any data sensitive application. That's common. But whatever his question is, particular. That's what common. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Next question yeah. is what's the benefit of going for multi cloud? And what reason when you think that, okay, this solution better to go for multi cloud? Okay. It's not the app specific. That's a very good question. Mm -hmm. uh, any multi cloud approach, not, okay, before I answer, Few of the folks already made the question. They said, Hi, when I ask who is using the multi cloud, I want to ask you, are you guys using multi cloud for your application perspective or from your organization kind of like a strategy point of view? What, what you are seeing in your trend? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, because of strategy. Strategic reason, but definitely they are application also like especially Microsoft application. They want to run it on the Microsoft Azure, but because the other application they want to run it on the Microsoft Azure. So in summary, what what I'm what I'm trying to explain is it's not 
all these application pushing the multiple flow or initiation from the top level because they feel empty. When the customer using multi cloud, they have a trade off. They can go negotiate what is the best in the Azure. They can say, hey, I'm running this application in Azure. They are pretty cheap and they're giving math. You are giving AWS, giving ADP. I don't want, I feel like there are more business. So what do you say? No, no, don't worry. I'm giving more ADP. You go look. That's a benefit for the customer. Second thing, okay, most developer, one set of developer comes. He has skills in AWS or he has skills in Google. He wants to do that. That is the business unit. Let them do that. As a leader, I want to encourage them what they what is the strength. Okay. Strategy. Then based on the skill set. And third is the application. As we told right? some of but to be honest, all clothes are equal. But it's not equal. It's a broad term. What I say is there is one application that can run on. Cloud X that can run on Cloud Y, Cloud X. Okay. Exactly. So we always the trade up. An example when it comes to GKE, it's always the same time. If you observe that and compare to Azure or AWS, the provisioning time, there is always trade up. That's why, if you remember previously, like uh, how many of you from here are like developers? Okay. I, I was. I asked the question maybe like five five years before. Are you involved in the decision matrix? Before five years. You are not even part of the discussion, right? Now, did you think, did you did you did you remember any time your manager come, hey, this is what we are planning to buy, what's the good news? If they ask you, you are indirectly influencing the deal. No, that's what I'm saying. Now, because developers are the decision factor right now. Okay. I hope I answered the question. Okay. I have two questions. I think you want to ask or like you want to give chance to people. People, people are audience are always first. Please. Yeah. Bombard, man. Bombard, Bombard. question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not developer, automation. Okay. Okay. Even in context of uh, second of infrastructure, mm -hmm. because I remember, like in my company, I, I remember, like you know, like, there, there has been a uh, direction given that uh, we were trying to convert these error points into uh, that the developers could easily provision the infrastructure. So, in in your experience, mm -hmm. the platform team. Mm -hmm. Have you seen such a trend where you are? How you are See, till to be very honest, a developer are still resistant. They say container, we will build it. Henceforth, you will It's your building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Terraform. See, uh, currently, uh, either Terraform or CDK. Okay, apparently it was SDK. Now every cloud changes to CDK. CDK is more of developer See, developers still, to be very honest, developers are still resistant to this. Okay, there's a trend to move towards the developer oriented infrastructure. Can you contribute to the CA and move either to the YAML or the community number? That's the platform. That's why I'm all about the platform. It's all special. What is the problem that I have solved? Right, right. Right, right. So, uh, you know, inclined towards Terraform, they, they want to go towards uh, maybe some language uh, type of script like CDK office. Yeah. Or to a younger template, which is much easier to just put in. And, you know, uh, okay. That's a very, very interesting question. Uh, but there is, to be honest, there is no direct answer for that. Okay. But I'll think from myself and answer that. Like, I'm a consultant, naturally, but I'm a consultant also. Based on my use case, what I do is if I want to convert any number of networks, I go with Terraform because I have all the scripts ready. Same time, I'm running an application. I want to customize application. Terraform says I have a connector to build that application as well. But I don't go, I, I won't go to Terraform. Say that I take the CDK. Because when it comes to application, I have a lot of APIs I can build it. It depends on the project and I don't ask it from the perspective of the infrastructure engineer itself. Mm -hmm. the organizational level. Mm -hmm. You see that kind of a force which is uh, making you move towards the 
towards you know more developing countries or even you are are like you're supposed to implement all these things. It's always something. Wave is always the developers. Everything is a software design. When we say software design, indirectly it's the demo oriented only, right? Even like all the organizations they have in Cisco, we have demos. It's more focused on developers. So do the whatever you are connecting is targeted for Google. Google developers are using. Now I think that's done. If any the last question, I'm happy to say it. But uh, yeah, that's it. And do my two things. We can take one or two maximum questions. Last, 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 yeah, that's fine. You come here, come here, come here. Yeah. Because they have to give the session, right? Let it go. No, they, they have to. Uh, because we, we have some. Okay. okay, it's about uh, Mahalo Kim Fine, right? You don't know uh, Kodensisha moving to the cloud. But on the other hand, I also read somewhere in the forums that uh, because of the financial and whatever concerns, this is going back to the cloud a bit more. So, uh, uh, that's true. Uh, that's why, like, uh, if you see uh, this year trend, cloud adoption, a lot of customers moved from on premises to cloud with the uh, approach of lift and shift. Okay. Uh, most of the people are unable to, or like uh, they're still in the journey, or they're facing a lot of challenges in cloud native. With the cloud native, even though cloud native says it's abstracted the cloud. But still, there is a lock-in when you're using the uh, cloud-based services, right? That is where uh, people think some of the applications want to be there in the cloud, like meaning like on-premises. Yes. They have talks already, already going on. That's true. Yeah, I see that. OK, yeah. so then we are like going to summarize this one. OK, I'll take the summary. Yeah. What are we going to do? Same summary, right? The existing one. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you. 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 But uh, since uh, we took a bit of time in the initial, so we were not able to introduce ourselves and what we are going to do uh, in near future. So my colleagues <coughs> for me will go through just five minutes. We will just uh, go through what we are going to do next month, where are the meetups, and about some community uh, support in Asia, Google's and everything. Then after, we will have one group photo, okay, everybody. We'll have a group photo. And then we will be done for the day. Okay, thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. Thank you, Ritesh. So uh, we are happy to announce that we have started our Kubernetes Australia uh, meetup group. So we are expanding uh, all over the world. So near future, we'll be starting in other countries as well. So if you want to join uh, Kubernetes Australia, you can uh, scan these QR codes. I'll give uh, like a few seconds. Yeah. So uh, I would like to uh, thank our sponsors, Google Cloud, uh, who is sponsoring us uh, for the entire year, and uh, Geofrog and Cloud Casa. So without them, uh, I think it's very uh, Difficult as to uh, organize these kind of meetups. So this is our uh, uh, LinkedIn page. So you can you guys can uh, follow our page. So we are just started and we are just moving in LinkedIn also. Right. So uh, volunteers uh, who who is willing to volunteer to our meetup uh, group, so they can uh, follow these links and the sponsors and the speakers. Who is uh, willing to uh, speak on next upcoming uh, meetups or the sponsor uh, for our meetups? So they can uh, follow this link or uh, contact us directly. So these are few uh, steps from our previous uh, meetups. So um, we are announcing this. Uh, 
Force Asia Summit uh, started today uh, and it will uh, run for, for uh, three days and uh, 15 Saturday till uh, 15 Saturday. So if you guys can join. If it's here. You're not sharing your screen. Can so you sharing your screen? Scan the QR, QR code. Um, uh, yeah, just to add, uh, this is a paid event for three days, but uh, since uh, we have collaborated with Post Asia, so if you scan this QR code and register, you will be able to attend this three days for free. Uh, British, share yeah, the screen, please. For the online attendees, we can see. Yeah, uh, so you can select uh, the group and the QR code. Let me apply the voucher and you should be able to access all Asia public for three days. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Uh, just flash this one for 15 seconds. So, if anybody has not scanned it, anybody interested, please go ahead. Our next uh, event we already uh, planned at the uh, Rakuten uh, venue. So, we'll be anyway uh, sending out the uh, uh, announcement through our meetup uh, uh, page. So, so we uh, all invite everyone to join the session as well. So we already have lined up the speakers and the uh, topics. Yeah, so next group of events we are having this uh, first time we are doing a joint collaboration with HashiCon uh, user group and Kubernetes user group. And we have this wonderful lineup. Uh, scan this QR code to directly uh, join to the meetup and, uh, you know, you can RSVP. Just make sure you fill out the form, fill up the form which is available uh, if you're coming on site. And uh, yeah, so yeah, that's it. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for joining today's session. So I hope you guys uh, grab some knowledge. So we um, hope to uh, do some interesting sessions in upcoming uh, meetup sessions. So we'll be doing some demos and some some other uh, interesting topics will be covered in next session. Thank you so much and have a good night. Uh, yes, uh, before leaving guys, uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us today. Please, everybody, if you can come here, yeah, we would like to take a selfie or a break. Yes, yeah. uh, So before leaving for the day, I would request everyone to please come towards the stage and let us take a selfie or a group photo and then we can for the day. Thank you.